Canadian hate science is coming to the U.S. Get ready for that, Americans. Well, what do I mean by this? Canada, during the pandemic, funded a totally crazy bonkers study showing that the unvaccinated were a public harm to the vaccinated. So the unvaccinated, according to this paper, should be put in lockdowns and subject to vaccine mandates. This was based on a delusional math model, not real world data, which at the time that this paper was published showed that the opposite was true. This is called the Fisman study. We've been talking about it for weeks. Well, data scientist and pissed off mother Regina Watil took this paper to task in her book called Fisman's Fraud, which has become an international bestseller. She came on Redacted in January, you may recall, and since then, the paper and its authors are all now being investigated in the House of Commons. But that has not stopped its author from just pushing out more nonsense. We spoke to Regina a few weeks ago about a new Fisman paper using, again, nonsense models this time to show that masks were super effective at stopping the transmission of COVID, even though real world data shows the opposite. And now this guy is back. He had the nerve to update the original paper about the unvaccinated to now claim that merely hanging out with unvaccinated people increases the risk to vaccinated people. Now, how can anyone say this with a straight face much less try to publish this in academic journals. Why is he getting away with this? And why now is he trying to publish this in America? We're gonna ask the author, Regina Watil. She joins us now. Regina, thanks so much for coming back on Redacted. It's a pleasure to see you again. So give us a background one more time for those of us who may not have seen your original pieces here on Redacted, uh, what the Fisman study is and why it's so infuriating and what's wrong with it. Okay, well, thank you very much for having me back on Redacted, Natalie. I, I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, once again, uh, Fisman, he does update his model, and once again, he, he doubles down on the falsehood that the unvaccinated pose a disproportionate risk to uh, others. So the original study received a lot of criticism here in Canada for three main reasons. The first reason was that it was a textbook case of scientific fraud. So what the researchers did in the original study is they concocted a model to simulate fake data that was opposite of real world data. And then they try to pass off this fake data and uh, results as fact, as a true reflection of what happened in Ontario during the Omicron wave. So that was scientific fraud. The second big criticism was the model itself. The researchers, developed a very simple deterministic model where the outputs were completely determined by a couple of pro-vax assumptions made by the researchers. So namely, the researchers assumed that the baseline immunity for unvaccinated Canadians, or unvaccinated people in general, was only 20%, and they assumed a vaccine effectiveness of 40 to 80%. And those two simple assumptions just gave them the results that they wanted. Right. And then and the, we don't see that now. It's that's never played out with the actual data that we have right now. No, no, not even close. Yeah. And then the third criticism was that the study, the original study was used to scapegoat unvaccinated Canadians. So if you recall, Natalie, the original study was published at a time when the Trudeau's vaccine mandates and, and travel restrictions were still at play and he was desperately trying to cling to them when everyone else in the world pretty much dropped their restrictions because Omicron showed that the vaccines did not reduce transmission. So the original study was used to prop up the mandates and to vilify the unvaccinated, to blame them for uh, disease transmission and to portray them as selfish, reckless individuals who needlessly put others at risk. So those were the three main issues with the original study. So what this update does is it seeks to legitimize the original study and the findings. It seeks to legitimize the notion that unvaccinated pose a disproportionate risk to others. And it does so by basically giving the original study a superficial facelift. So you can, you can dress up the original study, you can put lipstick on it, but you still can't take it dancing in that okay. this, <laughs> this, this study should not be entertained. It should okay, be nipped so, in the butt. 
One of the things you write about in your book is that original versions of the paper did not try to extrapolate the model to actual people. In fact, they used a different word. They didn't even use the word people until the third version that was actually published. And then they put, they just littered the paper with people, people all over the place. So originally they never meant to actually apply this to human beings. It was only a model. And now they're really pushing the fact that, oh yes, this is, human experience it's almost laughable it is you're right they littered it i think something like 76 times they mentioned people in the original uh, study and this study mentions people i think about 56 times so they still litter it with with people and this update still does not use real world people it still does not use real world data but the researchers are a little bit more ambiguous as to what their modeling and where. And for example, in the original study, they were modeling Ontario, the province of Ontario. In this new study, they say they are modeling a province in Canada, but they don't say which province. It just happens to have the same population size as the adult population in Ontario. Utopia. And in the <laughs> what they want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. So and then it's in the first model, they said Omicron. In this one, you'll notice they say an Omicron-like virus. So they do seem to be a little bit more ambiguous in this update. Okay. And one of, yeah. So one of the main updates to this model is in the previous model, a main criticism was that it didn't incorporate waning immunity. So in this updated version, instead of modeling the Omicron wave, they actually model the Omicron decade. They go out. 10 years and they assume that people will boost every two to 24 months for 10 years to top up their immunity so wow so it's a whole yeah okay and, but, and then they, but the, if we could just use this because this paper was used to hurt people in real in real life so could yeah. you then say that this is a model for what the canadian government wants to happen which is every 24 month vaccination well, it's pretty ominous, right? Like yeah. 10 years and continual boosting. What I believe is happening here is that this is more of a, a scientific placeholder for when they can use it in the future. So in the last in the last run, uh, they were trying to maintain the mandates. So there was a lot of fanfare. There was a lot of rhetoric. There was a media circus. That did not happen this time. Uh, Fisman did not go on tour comparing unvaccinated people to syphilis carriers and intoxicated drivers like he did last time. So it looks like they're trying to legitimize the original study um, and, and, and so that they can use that result to bring in passports later. Because passport, uh, the mandates and passports have been suspended here, but Trudeau made it very clear that they can come back at any time if the opportunity presents itself. So I think that's how it's being used. So was this republished in the same journal as before? And the same journal has no problem with these obviously hateful methodologies? No, it was not published in the same journal. Actually, uh, my understanding is they had trouble publishing it here in Canada. So the original study they did, there was the institutions uh, that were involved were not interested in retracting the study. They wanted to keep that study, but they allowed that study to spread to the United States. So this original, this updated version is now in a, a U.S. journal. Um, and there's a, a several interesting things with, with with what is not in in this paper. A few things I didn't find. So a second issue with the original study was they assumed a baseline uh, immunity for unvaccinated of 20 percent. When you look at this paper, they don't mention what the baseline is for the unvaccinated for immunity at all. It's not in the paper, it's not in the table. But when I download the Excel spreadsheet, I see that they actually used a value of 0%. They actually lowered it. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. And what else I didn't see in this paper is I did not see uh, a declaration of the funding and I did not see a de declaration of the um, competing interests. Right, so which original, was in the original paper, um, showed that they, that there was, it was Moderna, right? Was um, one of their backers. 
Well, it was funded by the Canadian government through CIHR, the Canadian Institute of Health Research. But David Fisman has a lot of ties to pharmaceutical industries. So he right. has ties to Pfizer, he has ties to AstraZeneca, he has ties to others. And it's University of Toronto where he works that has a huge partnership with Moderna. That's right. So they have that. But this is not mentioned, somehow it's not mentioned in this American version. So I found that shocking. Do you have any sway in uh, American academia to say, hey, this, this paper doesn't fly? Have you written to the new journal that's hosting it? Well, I am writing right now to the journal. There is a lot wrong with the updated version. So I am giving them a bit of a history of what the original is because this study says, oh, it, it validates the original. Um, so I have to address that. And I'm addressing all the new issues. So I will be writing to the to the um, uh, plus one. I think that's PLOS one. Um, so yeah, American Journal. And um, it, it's very troubling, Natalie, because as you know, that David Fisman did not um, receive any negative consequences to the scientific fraud that he has published here. And instead, he now leads the modeling unit in the new Institute for Pandemics. And they seek to be a global leader in how the world responds responds to future pandemics. And so to be a global leader, you need U.S. buy-in. And, and it looks like the, the U.S., uh, he is getting an audience and that um, there are institutions that are very uh, receptive to his pandemic work. Good so gracious. Uh, well, why don't you give us an update on the investigation in the House of Commons around this paper <laughs> then? Because maybe that will at least slow him down. Right. So the my book was actually mentioned in the House of Commons and a Conservative MP stood up and, and, and asked uh, the Liberal government uh, about funding this fraudulent study. And in response, it was shocking, a, a Trudeau Liberal stood up and basically called the Conservative a, a, a mega, mega alt-right Conservative. Right. And um, yeah. And then the, the, the Liberal MP uh, doubled down on the lie that unvaccinated were a disproportionate risk to others and actually said, thank goodness they were able to marginalize millions of Canadians during the pandemic. So they are not backing down from their stance. Um, and then, but they are getting some, some, some blowback from the opposition here. And uh, the opposition also came a second time asking about the um, federal government's involvement in the media frenzy that accompanied the first study. Uh, they asked whether there was a direct, uh, they also asked if there was any direct influence or, um, or if they were involved at all in the research itself. And so far we haven't gotten a, a response to that. Okay, all right, but it was requested. And is there a Canadian version of a subpoena that would force them to, or that's not on the table right now? Well, the the question regarding the um, whether there was direct involvement from the federal government, it was a, a, a paper order question, which means that they are supposed to respond to that question within 45 days. So we're hoping to have a, a response. They're, they're obligated to give one. OK. All right. But we haven't seen anything yet. No, we haven't seen anything. All we've seen is them doubling down on the on the lie okay. so far. Is there an American version of you that's saying, hey, get this paper out of our shores too that we can talk to? Well, I really hope that uh, people watching will write to the, the journal. I, I feel really bad uh, for the Americans because I, I, you know, they may not be aware of the harm that the original caused here in, in Canada. And this, this second paper is a little bit, it, well, it's more disguised than the first one. The first one was very obvious. It, mm -hmm. it had, yeah, the, the, the first one here played out so badly um, and, and we're still feeling the repercussions. So I'm really hoping that there is uh, somebody fighting this in the United States. And like I said, I, I am writing to the journal and um, I really hope others do as well. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that update. Uh, you can follow Regina Watil on X as well as get her great book, Fisman's Fraud. And uh, hopefully something comes of this because there's been a lot of waves, 
but no actual apology or retraction, which is absolutely what people would like to see, I believe. So thanks again for uh, coming on Redacted and telling us your story. Well, thank you so much, Natalie. And uh, we are seeing, you know, some some improvement here. Like I said, the Canadians, uh, the Canadian journals would not take this uh, updated version. Uh, I'm just I'm sorry that it went to the United States. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. You and me both. But we'll stay with it. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much, Natalie. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.